Okay, welcome to lecture seven. Uh, so lecture seven, we'll talk about reporter genes um, and then a little bit about bioinformatics. So first, reporter genes. So we talked about uh, East two hybrid screening method, right? So when uh, that GAL4 uh, transcription factor is reconstituted by two fusion proteins, and then and that can be recognized by the transcription and the translation of the gene that is under the control of the GAL4 um, binding site. Okay, so the GAL4 binding site normally is the promoter element uh, is uh, where the GAL4 binds. So if you have a gene that is under the control of GAL4 promoter sequence, then that gene will be transcribed and translated. Okay, then how uh, will you measure that transcription and translation inside of the cell? Yeah, that means uh, that protein uh, which will be made inside of the cell, the abs uh, absence or presence of the protein should be measurable. Okay, so that protein will become a reporter protein because you will be able to measure the gene expression level through the transcription and translation. Okay, so those are called reporter genes. So the genes whose products are, are easily measurable when they are expressed highly inside of a cell. Okay, those are reporter genes. So when you study uh, the gene regulation mechanism, especially transcription factor and promoter elements, okay, you need a reporter gene under the control of those to be able to see if that those gene regulation mechanisms are turned on or turned off. Okay, good example is that GAL4, exactly. Okay, how do you know GAL4 is really reconstituted? It, it's turning on the transcription and translation of the genes. Okay, so if you can measure the expression level of the reporter gene from the cell, yes, you can measure the turn on and turn off of your transcription factor. So, uh, think about this. Uh, so inside of a cell, single cell, if you can maybe um, introduce two plasmid DNA, okay, one has this, you know, gene, probably a, re a reporter gene, uh, I'm sorry, this is the reporter gene, okay, another gene has uh, the transcription factor coding gene, okay, so from this uh, gene, you express a transcription factor, which will bind on this, uh, you know, promoter element. Okay, once that transcription factor binds on that promoter element, then this reporter gene's transcription and translation will be turned on. Okay, so if you introduce these two plasmid DNA into this cell, new host cell, okay, once they get, go into uh, the nucleus, okay, the gene regulation mechanism, if it's turned on, you will be able to measure it because this reporter gene will be turned on. Okay, then how do you measure the gene expression? So this reporter gene should have some kind of a um, measurable outcome. Maybe it's an enzyme where you can uh, measure your, its enzyme activity by looking at the conversion of its substrate into a product. Or maybe it's some kind of a protein that will give you a signal, like maybe a fluorescent protein. So you can see the change of the level by uh, looking at the fluorescence. Okay, think about the FRAT technology, so GFP or yellow fluorescence or blue fluorescent proteins, if they are built inside of the cells, you can measure them by uh, shining the uh, fluorescent uh, energy in, into the cell. Okay, so, so those are all considered as reporter genes. Okay, so let's take a look at it. Number one, reporter gene that's traditionally uh, used a lot is called uh, CAT gene. Okay, CAT gene. CAT stands for chloramphenicol acetyltransferase enzyme. So it's an enzyme, chloramphenicol acetyltransferase enzyme. Okay, so it is a prokaryotic gene, so found from bacterial cells. It gives a resistance to one of the antibiotics called chloramphenicol. So normally bacterial cells die if there is a presence of chloramphenicol, but if this gene, CAT gene, is uh, transformed into bacterial cells, they can survive with the pr presence of chloramphenicol. So it's an antibiotic resistant gene. Okay. And, uh, the, the way uh, how this enzyme works, it's going to transfer the acetyl group okay, from acetyl coenzyme A to chloramphenicol. Okay. And by doing so, it can inactivate the chloramphenicol antibiotics. That's how uh, bacterial cells can survive. So it transfers the acetyl group from acetyl coenzyme A to that's what it does. Okay, so if G, if this gene, uh, cat gene, 
is highly expressed inside of cell, then you will see more uh, conversion, transfer of this you know, acetyl group from coenzyme I to uh, its substrate, crown phenicone. Okay, then the question is, can you measure that activity easily? Okay, uh, the answer is yes, if you use uh, maybe something like radio labeled crown phenicol and then maybe coenzyme A. Can, you can provide those to the maybe cell extract. Cell extract is what? If you grow up the cells that has, you know, the catching turned on and then break open the cells and isolate the proteins, can okay, if you add these things inside of test tube and through the in vitro assay, you can see the uh, conversion of uh, radioactive uh, crown phenicol into acetylated crown phenicol. And then you can measure that conversion because on a TLC thin layer chromatography, you can see how much of a normal crown phenicol is becoming acetylated crown phenicol because their position will become different once they are acetylated. So you can measure that. Okay, so quantification uh, is possible uh, if there's a high level of catch and expression happening inside of a cell. Okay. So it's a measurable uh, reprogen, that's a catching. And number two, reprogen is uh, called luciferase enzyme. So enzyme, luciferase, normally this, this protein, enzyme, is found from uh, fireflies like these guys. Okay. So what they do is what? They turn on the light on the belly of these fireflies. Okay. How do they do that? Because they can convert luciferin, their substrate, into this form. Okay, oxyrusferin, which will give you that light. Okay, so if this enzyme, rusferase enzyme uh, coding gene, is highly expressed, you will see more of this conversion. Okay, rusferin into uh, this rusferin uh, plus AMP, and then light energy coming out. So you'll be able to measure that light fluorescence. Okay, if there is a high level of rusferase enzyme turned on inside of the cell. So that's how uh, this reprogen works. Okay, so measuring by measuring the amount of light that's made through, through this uh, enzyme. Okay, so uh, the most common luciferase gene is from firefly, like I said, and acts on the particular luciferin substrate. Okay, and the other luciferase enzymes they come from sea pansy or certain marine bacteria. Okay, uh, they are a little different from luciferin. Um, okay, so. The luminometer is the instrument that can measure the amount of light, so you can use that to quantify, again, the level of luciferase enzyme expression from the cell. Okay, so that was number two. And the number three, reprogen, is uh, um, uh, this is one you are familiar with. That's beta galactosidase enzyme coding gene. Uh, the name of the gene is uh, laxizin. So laxizin is part of what? Lac operon. It's a bacterial operon, lactose uh, operon. So there are three genes, um, but laxi, this gene is a coding enzyme called beta galactosidase. Okay. So this enzyme can hydrolyze uh, disaccharide into a monosaccharide. Okay? So lactose is disaccharide, but it, it can be broken into galactose and glucose, which are monosaccharides. That, that's what this enzyme does inside of a bacterial cell. But there are uh, other, uh, the substrate homologues, okay, uh, that beta galactose enzyme can work on. Okay, those are uh, ONPG or nitrophenyl beta D galactosidase. Okay, that is a one substrate that become yellow product. And there's another uh, substrate that is fibromophore chloro three indyl uh, beta D galactosidase, so which is called XGAL. Okay, if this enzyme is uh, this substrate is broken by uh, beta galactosidase, you will get a blue substrate. Okay, and then fluorogenic substrate, uh, the third one is possible for methyl lumino uh, valdiferi uh, free. Uh, beta D galactosidase, which is called MUG. So OMPG X scale MUGs have similar structure as lactose. So all these three things can be broken into um, signal generating uh, product. Okay, that's how you can measure the amount of uh, uh, beta galactose enzyme that is uh, expressed inside of a cell. Okay, that's how this uh, reprogen works. 
Okay, so example, so this is the conversion of ONPG into product. You will see the development of yellow color, right? So if ONPG is broken down by beta galactosidase enzyme, you see that conversion easily. So if you add the cell extract that contains a lot of beta galactosidase, you will see that yellow uh, color uh, development. And similarly, mug. Uh, if you uh, provide MOG into the test tube, you will see uh, the light uh, coming out. So that's how you can quantify it. Then finally, the last reprotogen uh, that is commonly used is uh, GRP, which stands for green fluorescent protein. Okay, so originally the gene came from jellyfish. Okay, and uh, this gene can be uh, transformed into uh, whatever the cells. And then when this gene is turned on, of course, you will get a uh, green fluorescent protein made inside of the cell. So you can measure that by shining the fluorescent light. You can measure the amount of green light, green fluorescence coming from the cell. That's correlated with the level of gene expression. So you can measure that, quantify that easily. Okay, so you can use it for bacteria, yeast, drosophila, mammary and cell, any kind of cells. Okay, so it is uh, a very convenient uh, reprotogen. So we talked about four reprotogens. So one is GRP, another one is what? Um, the beta galactosidase enzyme. Okay, and the third one is um, uh, the en uh, enzyme. And the last one we talked about is uh, the CAT. Uh, Carbophenicol acetyl transferase, four different reprotogens we talked about. Can okay, remember what they do and how they can be measured? Okay, and then let's talk about bioinformatics. You probably heard this uh, word a lot, bioinformatics. Informatics. What does that mean? So bio means, yeah, biology. It's using something uh, living, right? Informatics is what? Informatics is uh, the field of uh, study where you need to handle vast amount of information. So informatics, when you say it, it's the study of how to deal with a lot of information. That's what informatics is. Then by combining those two words, you will create a new field. Actually, this new field was created uh, back in at the end of 20th century. So that's when a lot of uh, genome projects uh, were completed. So when you uh, do a genome project, genome project means you think, sequence out the entire genome of a living system. For example, the human genome project was able to map out, sequence out the entire uh, 46 chromosomes, their DNA sequences. That was done at the end of 20th century. Right? Not only that, you know, beginning from 1960s, the simple things like bacteriophage genome was um, or sequenced out, and then we moved to the E. coli cells and yeast cells, and then plants and you know animals, mammals like uh, mouse, and then human. So, so there are so many genomes been all sequenced out. Um, I mean, throughout uh, the 20th century and the 21st century. So when you do that, when, when one genome is uh, entirely sequenced out, you are dealing with a vast amount of information. Okay, all those nucleotide sequence should be stored somewhere. Not only you should be able to store the information, and whenever you need that information, you, sh you should be able to have a, a way of pulling out or maybe arranging the information or sorting out the information the way you need it. Okay, so that's what you talk about the information handling study. That's informatics, right? So that is the beginning of bioinformatics because the field of biology created so much information through the genomic study as well as the proteomic study. Not only you sequence, sequence out the entire genome, you sometimes sequence out RNA based on your DNA sequence and then the protein sequence, which is made up with amino acid sequences. Okay, that's a lot of uh, information you need to handle. Okay, so, so that's the beginning of the new field, genomics. Okay, meaning you deal with the DNA sequences, okay, the coding region, uncoding region, and how similar they are uh, among different species, and how different they are, and what's found from non-coding region, all those regulatory elements, and all those things. Okay, and then bioinformatics, prote uh, proteomics again. It's again dealing with the protein-related uh, information, like protein sequence, protein structure, um, protein. Um, the functional groups, domains, all those things uh, are handled through this field of proteomics. Okay?